Welcome back everyone. This will be our lecture on mollusks, which are my absolute favorite phylum of invertebrates. So this word mollusk, it means soft-bodied. And our mollusks are characterized by a soft body with a specialized tissue called the mantle. And this mantle is the tissue that may make a shell for the mollusk. All right, some common examples of mollusks are things like snails and clams and octopus. And believe it or not, there are over 100,000 known species of mollusks. So let's examine these diverse creatures a little bit more closely. So for their symmetry, they do have bilateral symmetry, although many times their bodies are folded or twisted in such a way that that symmetry is a little bit obscured. Right? Their digestive system is complete. However, if, for example, we trace the digestive system of this snail, you will see that food comes in and the snail poops on its head. And in fact, that is the case for many of these mollusks. Their bodies are almost folded in half, and so they have a complete digestive system, but the mouth and anus are coincidentally near each other. Their circulatory system may be open or closed. This really varies by species and by where they live. They do not have segmentation. And for their nervous system, they have a brain and nerve cords. And that brain may be more or less complex depending on the organism. Now, their skeletons. So mollusk skeletons are made by the mantle. And most are made of calcium carbonate that mineral that we talked about before with our cnidarians. The inner layer, however, is something called mother of pearl, or knacker, which is this shiny material that you see on the insides of abalone or oysters. And that is what actually layered up, um, helps create a pearl inside an oyster. Their skeleton, or their shell, actually grows with the mollusk. So, on this bivalve, for example, we can see, based on the lines, different growth stages in the mollusk. And one thing that many people don't think about is that the shell is actually attached to the mollusk. Um, if you pull a snail out of its shell, you don't get a slug, you get a dead snail. This snail, for example, lives in a cave because it does live in the dark. It has no pigments in its shell. It's kind of evolutionarily lost them and you can see through it and you can see how the snail's body is actually wrapped through its shell. Um, so the shell is really attached to that mollusk. All right. So what type of skeletons do they have? All mollusks have a hydrostatic skeleton within the soft part of their body. Some may also have an exoskeleton. So this applies to things like snails and bivalves or clams, like these two. They have their shells on the outside. They may also have an endoskeleton. And this applies to things like squid, who actually do have a flexible endoskeleton inside, braces them so they can move. Um, and some slugs have a bit of an endoskeleton, depending how their body wraps around. Now, how many skeletons do they have or how many shells? If it has two shells, we typically class it as a bivalve. One shell, those are things like our snails and our squid. And then there are some with no shells. And that would be our slug and our octopus. Okay. So it's a great diversity of skeleton locations and types among our mollusks. However, despite their diversity, mollusks are made of two basic body regions. One of those is the muscular foot. And this muscular foot is what the mollusk uses to move. 
right? In a snail, it is on the bottom of its body. The foot in a squid is actually divided into arms, so it can look a lot of different ways. Um, and then the other region is the visceral mass. And this is where all of the organs are. So in humans, for example, our torso is basically where our visceral mass is. And these two different components, the foot and the visceral mass, combine in different arrangements to create the three general mollusk body types that we see. All right, so let's look at these mollusk body types and their classes. Our first class is the gastropods. So this word, gastropoda. Gastra means stomach. And poda means foot. And if you'll notice, if we outline our snail here, okay, our snail has its stomach on top of its foot. So that's why they're called gastropods. This includes things like snails, slugs, and my absolute favorite, sea slugs. All right, and just we're going to pause for a minute, minute for a PSA on sea slugs because they're amazing. Sea slugs are kind of like Rogue from X-Men. These four are sea slugs. They go around stealing the superpowers of other organisms in the ocean and using them for themselves. So, for example, this one, Glaucus atlanticus, steals the nematocysts out of a Portuguese man of war, concentrates them into its own body without getting stung, and then deploys them against potential predators and prey. This slug um, eats toxic chemicals out of sponges that it eats that it consumes, stores those chemicals in its body, uses them against potential predators. This one also eats the stinging cells out of hydroids, and this one right here is actually a photosynthetic sea slug that steals the chloroplasts out of algae and then farms those chloroplasts in their own bodies. So really incredible things that these sea slugs can do. Another key feature, and that is um, diverse among different kinds of gastropods, is the radula. And the radula is basically the mouth parts of the snail, right? Many snails have mouth parts that are made for scraping, like the snails that you see on the side of an aquarium scraping off the algae. This is what their radula looks like under a scanning electron microscope. And they use that to pull the algae off the side. Sometimes those radula are used for drilling. Moon snails in particular drill holes into other mollusks um, and then kill those mollusks and eat them. And then they can also be used for harpooning. And for this one, I encourage you to, after you're done with this video, watch the cone snail video on our Verge biology page because it is amazing how, um, how lethal these tiny snails can be. So moving on from gastropods, our next class is our pelisopods or bivalves. This word pelisopod means hatchet foot. And they are called this because this thing right here that looks like a tongue, that is actually the foot of the bivalve. And they're called hatchet foot because they use that muscular foot to dig down into the substrate, the sand or the mud, and pull themselves along. Um, there's a video of this on our Verge page if you'd like to check it out. Um, the other word for them, bivalves, really comes from two halves or two shells, okay? So our bivalves are the ones that have two shells. And this includes things like mussels, scallops, clams, large and small, and oysters. All right. Most of these bivalves are fairly sessile. They may be able to detach, but and some scallops can swim, but most of these are pretty sessile, which means they filter feed to get their food. And in fact, they use their gills not just for getting oxygen from the water, but also for straining plankton from the water. Our last group then of mollusks is our cephalopods. This word cephalopod or cephalopoda means head foot. And if we look closely, the head is right on top of the foot in a cephalopod, okay? The foot of a cephalopod is divided into arms. And yes, they're called arms, not tentacles in a cephalopod. Tentacles have a different use in them. Um, and these arms are covered with suckers. All right, and they use their arms for movement, for capturing food. All right, so some, a variety of cephalopods includes our octopus, squid, cuttlefish, 
and chambered nautilus, which can actually have a shell on the outside and can use it almost as a float or a submarine to go up and down in the water. Um, at the end of this, so octopus do some really cool things with camouflage and how they move their bodies. Please watch the videos on Verge. If we go to our cladogram again, our mollusks are this branch right here. You can see that they are different from our previous nematodes and platyhelminthes because they are coelomate, meaning they have a body cavity that is fluid filled and tissue lined. And they are different from this branch over here because they are protostomes, meaning that their mouths developed first instead of their anus. So now what you can go do, watch all those mollusk videos on the Verge Invertebrate Biology page, and then come on back for our annelid video.